Continue from the previous lesson or open the file Chapter 3 Facade Bevel Profile 05.max. Go ahead and select the object Light Pole Base if it's not already selected. Remember, we've added several modifiers, but we didn't get the object we were really looking for. Now we need to use the flexibility built into this stack view to navigate the modifier stack and make changes to the various parameters that will give us what we're looking for. Let's begin by editing the extrude modifier. This will allow us to edit the extrude modifier parameters in the modifier stack. Go ahead and click on the extrude modifier. When we created the pole, by default it was created with only one segment. That means that there was only one segment along the entire 40 feet of this pole. Therefore, when we put the bend modifier on it, it actually didn't bend, it just sort of laid over. In order to fix this, we need to increase the number of segments. 15 to 20 should be enough to give us a reasonably smooth curve. For efficiency's sake, let's keep that value at 15. Highlight the number in the segments type in. Type in 15 and then press enter. Now that gives us enough segments to show the bend and taper effect. But as you notice, the pole is very oddly distorted. Think about what we've done. We've extruded the shape to make a pole. Now we've added segments that allow us to bend it. Then we bent the pole and then we tapered it. The problem is a bent pole that gets tapered will distort. The problem in the modifier stack is that the taper and the bend modifiers are in the wrong order. Let's correct that by selecting our bend modifier, clicking and dragging it above the taper modifier, and then releasing the mouse button. Now we've extruded the object, then tapered it, then bent it. In this order, we not only get a more logical progression of modifiers, we also get something closer to what we want for our final object. The last problem is that the bend isn't quite right. We're going to use a feature called limits. We want to be able to limit the effect of the bend to within a certain distance of the pivot point of the object, which becomes the center of the bend. With the bend modifier selected, in the parameters rollout limits area, click the limit effect checkbox to turn on the bend limit options. Look at what happens to our pole, it just lays down flat. To fix this, in the upper limit field, type in 10 and press the enter key. This tells 3ds Max to only bend up 10 feet. Now this makes an interesting change, but it's still not what we're looking for. I don't think this light pole would work particularly well on any standard city street. Most objects we've worked with so far have had a sub-object level and the modifiers are no different. In the bend modifier, expand the list by clicking on the plus sign and select the center sub-object level. Then right mouse click in the front viewport and we're going to move where the bend occurs in the pole. Make sure you have the select and move tool active from the main toolbar. Highlight the Y axis on the transform gizmo in order to limit our movement to only the Y direction. Now click and move the bend center gizmo up in the viewport so that your pole looks something like this. We've changed where the bend starts and how long the bend lasts in order to get our light pole to look the way we want it. Something that's very important is that you don't need to remember all of the tools. However, it is important that you take some time and play with the features. You'll begin to understand as you work with the tools that you have an extraordinary amount of flexibility. Anytime you work with sub-object level, it's almost always wise to close or exit the sub-object level and return to the top level. In this case, click on the Bend Modifier top level to highlight it and exit sub-object mode. Save the file by pressing Control S. We now have a lamp post that is bent and looks the way we want it to look.